Tell me about how you got involved in the Ted Bundy case. Well, I was, I didn't know anything about Bundy. I had a young guy work for me at Newsweek. I was a bureau chief in Houston, and Stephen Michaud was right out of college and was assigned to me, and we worked together on a couple of murder stories in Houston. And uh, then Bundy came along, and I, I let, I, I just didn't know who he was. It looked like he was wrongly accused because of his background. He'd been a Republican uh, worker. He'd been a law student for a while. He'd, and he was, people that knew him said, that couldn't be Ted. That just couldn't be. Well, by that time, uh, Stephen Michaud had uh, ended the, his trial with Newsweek, went to New York and uh, came up with a publisher who was interested in Bundy. And we've written probably five or six books together. He called me one day and said, hey, so I got a call from Simon & Schuster. They want to know, they want someone to write a book about this guy. Have you heard about Ted Bundy? And I said, well, not a lot. I, I know he's from the Northwest, and I know he's a handsome dude, and he's, people think he's innocent, a lot of them. Of course, in those days, the problem was that they didn't have instant touch with departments and different agencies and everything like they do today. Oh yeah, it's it's instantaneous communication but, today. But anyway, there, that's you know. that started us. I said, well, let's talk to them, and we did. And uh, primarily, I think, because of my uh, work on the space program and the Kennedy assassination that sold him that, that I could help him do it. So that's how we got together. And then we had a problem because the average person can't just walk in the Florida State Prison. Right. You know? So I got this idea. I was a licensed private eye at that time in Texas. I did that to get access. And I thought it'd probably work in Florida too, and it did. And I got Stephen, my partner, signed up as a private eye also, so we could come and go. And so we spent almost 100 hours oh my with goodness. Bundy in a little old room half as big as this. He, he was very arrogant at first, but we sent Stephen in first, because Stephen had been born up in the Northeast, and at a young age had moved to Tacoma, Washington. And that's the same thing as Ted had done. He'd moved. His mother was in Washington area, moved to Tacoma, Washington. So they grew up together. Yeah, Stephen that connection. And Ted. Yeah. And they knew some of the same people, and it was a little uncanny, really. And we thought, boy, that's another plus. Now we got access. Now we got people. You know. So Stephen went in for the first half of our interviews, 30, 40 hours. We couldn't budge him. He wouldn't talk about anything, but he was innocent. And he talked about all his old buddies and what he thought in school and stuff like that. And then it was my turn to go in. And what I had with me, I had gone to Washington, Utah, Colorado, Arizona, and Montana, I think, interviewing cops testing, reporting on all the deaths that were thought to be Bundy's. So when I went in there, the jig was over because we didn't talk about his innocence, which riled him up quite a bit. He was very angry with me from day one. But but he kept seeing you. He kept, the, uh, the ego, we, we used his ego against him. And uh, I remember I started to tell you this a little bit ago. When when Reagan was shot, he was shot by a guy from Texas, from Dallas. I had two daughters as teenagers then. They were in the same school he'd gone to. And I told Ted, I was with Ted that morning. And I said, you won't believe this, but let me tell you about my daughters. And he said, he thought, he said that is really weird. He said, well, 
I don't know whether he said when I get out or if I can get out. I'm going to I'm going to get someone really famous, maybe the president's daughter or somebody. Oh my goodness, that must have been chilling. Not really. He wouldn't go get out. But I mean, just to hear him room. say it. That's sick. Yeah. Yeah. Did yeah. well, he escape twice? Yeah, but that was early on when. That's before he got to Florida prison. Yeah. <laughs> well, his escapes were really something. He lost about 30 pounds to get out of one jail. Right. And they went up through a, a, a air vent and over and out. And the other one, he jumped out of the second story window while he was on trial. In Aspen, I have visited that courthouse. I looked at, I saw that window he jumped yeah. out of. <laughs> it's a small courthouse. Yeah. But uh, Bundy and I did not get along from it. Day on. And then he came up with an idea he, when he thought he was going to be put to death, way back, maybe 85 or 6, he uh, said, I wonder if I went to the governor and told him that I'd clear up a lot of this stuff if he'd let me live or let me live a, for a time anyway. I said, well, I don't know Governor Martinez, but I'll go see him for you and I'll broach the subject if you want. He said, yeah, do that. Well, I guess he got talking to his girlfriend who later became his wife. And um, the next time I went to see him, he said, I never told you to do that. And I said, you son of a bitch. And I pulled up the tape and played it for him. <laughs> that was a good day. I played, he said, well, I, I, I refuse. But it was that kind of, oh, it was really, having two teenage daughters and having met most of the, not most, but half a dozen to eight victims' families did something to me when, when he would act like he didn't do anything, you know. I felt sorry for him to an extent because he had a mother that didn't know that she was probably the, the cause of it all. How's that? Well, she was. She got pregnant and was not married. He was born in a unwed mother's home up in Connecticut. He never knew who his father really was. It never came up. She moved out to Tacoma with him, married a, an army cook named Johnny Bundy, and Ted thought that was his real father. When he was a teenager, 14 or 15, he was up in the attic looking through old papers, found out, no, this was not his dad. Didn't know who his dad was. What papers, I don't know. And that knocked him for a loop. He took his dog, went up on a hill, and stayed two or three days. And he said, that was the time that I, I just came around in my mind. And I said, well, what do you mean? came around. <laughs> he would never get too deep in his philosophy, but it, it was it was sort of sad in a way. He just never quite belonged. And yet he did, you know, so many murders.